Tuvin. So you can tell everybody what you're doing and why. Well, we put these tacks in the bottom so that it's supported just above your tabletop. Um, so that it doesn't, you don't have to put, uh, you don't have to put anything down. And it, it, so it doesn't stick to whatever it is that it's sitting on. Yeah. It'll drip off and it'll really stick to whatever it is under it. And it's easier to pick up and tilt if you have a little lip under it. I was gonna, should I put it down? what it looks like with this safety pin, safety pins, push pins. Push this is pins. a push pin for sure. Or if you don't, it looks like this. And it's hard to get your hand under it without messing up your edges. And it will definitely bond with the table. Also, I just... So what are we gonna do today? negative space for which is something we don't usually do so i'm kind of nervous about it and we're going to see if it works out we're going to learn together shall we we shall pro tip use double layer of gloves so you can take one off when you want to pick up some of your plug-inables that's not a word there's no word like our um this our torch has been resined to its, it doesn't come on anymore. It's waste. It won't, I wonder if I just hit it to the ground. No, because it, it's just done. Because it's resined together. So if you do all your things and you take your top layer of gloves off and you have a fresh glove to use your torch or heat gun or what's the other thing we use? Blow dryer. Blow dryer. So yeah. And or your phone or your laptop or your camera. All the things. So you're welcome. As usual, we're going to be using Envirotech's light. They were out of the large boxes at our neighborhood Hobby Lobby, so they're little mini boxes. Because um, they're usually grown up size, like this. Make sure there's no debris in your resin um, apparatus because then it'll get on your piece then you get to pick it out and it will probably most likely mess up whatever it is that you just did. And it'll always happen on the part that you like the most. Nice and clean. We're using one of these that tells us how many parts we're pouring. It makes life easier. When you use the push pins, make sure that they go in between where the the wood meets. So a lot easier to push in, take out, and it's away from the edge, so you can scrape the edges from the excess that comes off of it. Yep. Go ahead and push them all the way in. Easy. That way, you're sure that you have a level surface because it's super important that it's level like this. If it's not level, all your resin will rush to the lowest point because it is liquid and that's what liquid likes to do. So everything that you did will run off and adjust. Right. Super excited. Also today we're doing a diptych. If you don't know what that is, it's super simple. It's two canvases that are one painting. So we have this larger one and nine by 12. I'm not really sure what this is, nine by. We're we just gonna make this whole thing. What is that, 16 ounces? Yeah. I mean, because there's gonna be a lot of white right here. We have to make a lot of white. So just one and one. All right. Eight, eight. Just pour it. I mean, yeah, it'll be 16. 
but assuming that it all comes out. So we don't need this. Good job. What are you doing? Come here. Come here. You want to come up here? No? Cool. He doesn't want to. It's not. It's camera shy. It's a little over. What is it on the window on that? Right at two. And this is for your um white. Which white are we gonna use? The new white? Basic? Uh, yeah, just a regular one. We're going to try something different. I have this flat white. Or do you want to do flat white? she added too much acrylic paint. I don't know that you can add too much ink. I'm sure you can, but it's harder to do. But with acrylics, you have to be very careful because they're thicker and it'll change the scientific makeup of your resin. It's science on all levels, I'm sure. I don't know the science, but I know that if you add too much, it's gonna change how it sets and you don't wanna, you don't wanna go there. We are going to use some fun colors today. Everything that we're using today is acrylic. Um, as far as the colors. I think they're all medium body acrylics. But this one is by Art District. It's just a regular titanium. And we're also using... Amsterdam. Uh, the rest of these are Amsterdam. This color is... A mystery. Um, sky blue. There's so many names on here for this one. It's number 551. Five, one. Oh, that is my favorite color. The one you just used? Yeah. Number 557. Five, well, I'm going to show them the green. The green is awesome. The green is very, very opaque. You haven't used it yet. 
The purple is number 568. Use this teal yet? <laughs> it's number 522, which is a very vibrant color. And then the green is not by Amsterdam. It is by Mural Paint Marker Company. And the color is Volatile Organic Compound. Number 2178. No, it's called Slime, which is way more appropriate than what I first said. It's this color, and the bottle looks like this. We got this at like um, a local art shop called Azel. This is Azel, right? I haven't yeah. seen anything like this at a Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Joann's. You can probably order it online, but... It's good paint. If you want more information on these paints, just message us below. Message us below. Comment below or send us a message. I always put the resin in the cups first. That way I know how much pigment I need for the amount of resin I've chosen to use per color. Make sure you mix, especially with acrylics, your, look how fun that looks. By fun, I mean creepy. Mix your pigments in super well, because if you don't, you'll also have problems with the resin setting properly. You'll end up with chunks of paint in and amongst your resin, and that's not fun. Because it will also set differently, and it may set matte instead of the super gloss that the resin is. How will pick do you want your white? You can still see through this it. This is the first time. You guys are going through this with us for the first time as well. So this is going to be our first negative, negative space. Negative pour. And dirty cup negative. It doesn't have to be super opaque because this is white. Should we use just a little cup? Yeah, because... What is that? Five colors? Yeah, it's not going to be You can always mix in more color. You cannot take it out. So just mix a little at a time until you get... Yeah, but what's, what's, what's going to be interesting with this is it doesn't mix like acrylic paint when you when you mix them together the color is not the yeah. color in the resin let's get there closer should we get them closer yeah what we're doing I'm just going to put you all closer trying to accomplish is to just all negative space here we don't want any color out here that's what the goal is 
<laughs> we'll see if that but ends up the, happening uh, that way. What normally happens is what resin wants to happen. That's how resin rolls. It does what it wants. When you're working with this much white resin, you need to make sure that your gloves don't have any of the pigments from when you mix your colors in because obviously when you touch your white resin areas, it's going to transfer some of the color. So that's why we're doing as far away from where we poured the color parts first. Did you put orange in there? Nope. Huh. together without them. <laughs> We're just gonna I guess we can do the, the air gun or the hair dryer. I think we need to just pour some clear in that little oh, yeah, that'll gap. Be fun. Because the clear is gonna show it's white anyways. Or we can just line it with some color. Yeah, and you have plenty of colors. Sure the two parts are fairly mixed together and it's also going to help us to make sure that the two parts of resin are overlaying on each other and this is what gives us cells and lacing and things like that So you're going to blow it or are you going to we just tilt it. I think we should blow it. Be cautious when you're using any kind of heat that um, you don't leave it in one spot for too long. Because then you'll scorch your resin. And it will give you um, an odd portion of your piece. Oh, are we that's looking? And the heat also, uh, if it's starting to set after a couple minutes, it also reactivates.
like a dragon. if there's any um, raw patches or air bubbles or if the blow dryer put anything into your piece that you um, don't want there. I'm going to what you got going on mm -hmm. all right so let's move these where's it, where's it gonna go in here set too you can put the heat in your paint and it'll reactivate it. It gets hot so just sitting there it'll set up and move it around a little bit. A little easier to work with in this time frame stuff. try to do the gold spray paint thing. Right. That's what I want to do. So, 
let's try, just, let's just cover it and then just put colors in it, yeah? Try to save a little. <laughs> Always around the room. So you're gonna dirty pour these or? Um, I think we should just do it like kind of It's just going to be clumpy now. <laughs> <laughs> 